Oh, we don't have to wear these if you want to take them off. No, I'm well. Now what they got gave me phone head. What do you call it? Phone head? <laughs> I like phone head. <laughs> <laughs> From Straw Hut Media. <laughs> this is Brandy Glanville unfiltered. Hey Rye, how are you? I'm okay, Brandy. How are you? You're not good. I know, I'm not feeling the best. I want to put on the spark because I feel cold. Wow. I had the heater on, but you usually complain that it's too hot. I know, in here. I've been going like back and forth between. Oh, it's because you got the cold. Moderna shot and got he the, got the booster today. I got the booster and I've just been wanting to wear big, cozy sweaters and scarves all day. Oh my God, this. I shouldn't have taken off the headphones. You ruined my hair for the whole day. You want to put them back on? No, now it's too late. Okay. Um, I'm so sorry that you feel like shit. It's okay. It's going to be gone tomorrow, I think. Yeah, because and... I'm feeling feisty and fun today. <laughs> What does that mean for us? I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be <laughs> spicy. I'm actually making lasagna right now. It smells so good in here. I know. Um, is there meat well, in at it? Least, yeah, of course. But well, you don't eat meat. No, I do. I like. I was just. I was just curious if yeah, it, if it had meat. How can you have lasagna without meat? People do it. That's stupid. <laughs> do it. That should be against the law. Um, <laughs> no, Kristen's uh, daughter, Kristen Takeman. Yeah. Her daughter has COVID, and now her husband Josh has COVID. When was the last time you saw him? Oh, I haven't seen them at all. I dropped off a, like a little care package for Kingsley because I love her. I'm stealing her from Kristen because I, I don't have a girl. Now she's mine because um, I gave her Twix and uh That's how you win them over. Yep. That's how you do Candy it. Candy every time. Every time. Um, she was so happy. But then Kristen's a horrible cook and I was already making lasagna for Jake. So I'm just making it extra and I'm going to go like <laughs> drive by and throw it out the window. <sighs> Well then, you should drop it off, not throw it. No, I'm gonna drop it off. What have you like going? What have you had that she made that was horrible? Kristen doesn't cook. Oh, just at all. No, but she did invite me over the other day for dinner, and then she put a scary face. And then that day is the day she found out Kingsley had COVID, and I I was like kind of relieved because. But see, you were there though, so like. No, I would have gone. I just would have eaten it before. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Um, and then what else? I had something else to tell you. My dog is depressed. He's I here. know. You said oh. he bit you or something. Yeah, he bit me. He's having he's he's having um anxiety. He misses his dog enemies from the other place. Yeah, he's he's honestly he's been really mellow. Like he he'll walk he'll bark at me. It's called depression. He's not mellow. <laughs> he'll bark at me a little bit when I come in, but then you, at the old place, he barked every time I brought in a new piece of gear. Yeah, he's over like he's and giving now, up on life right now. Yeah, he's like he's giving up. Yeah, I don't yeah. like it. So I'm gonna um I'm gonna take him back to the old place for a little walk through. Oh wait, yeah, you said you were gonna do that. Yeah, you haven't done it yet. Well, it rained like cats oh, and dogs. That's true. Oh, dogs, and we only have one dog here, but it's only part time. Um, so that he just sits out there and waits for this dog to come back, and it's so sad to watch. Have you tried putting him in his uh, security vest? He's not scared. He's depressed, Ryan. He's not shaken. He's biting me like, bitch, where's my dog enemies? Oh, you think that's what it is? Yeah, no, I know. I know my dog very well. Um, Okay, so there's a thing that happened that I want to talk about. Uh-oh, what? Oh, first, I'm excited to have Lola Blanc today on the podcast. Lola Blanc. I am obsessed with her. And I don't, only just after reading about her because I didn't know who she was before that. But now we have so much to talk about. She's a writer and a singer and a podcast movie host produ- and a movie producer, movie producer and, and director she loves horror films and she does pretty much everything i think that you should be in one of her horror films that's what i'm working up to yeah. okay i'm okay. gonna try to like be really nice yeah 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 <laughs> we'll see how that goes <laughs> oh and i wanted to say thank you to liz lang from the podcast that we did yeah she sent me this beautiful she sent me this from her line fig what yes. this shirt yes that or is that a blouse? Is that what that's called? It's a blouse, yeah. Oh my From gosh, it. that is so nice. What was the podcast? It was um called Just Enough. Oh yeah, uh, Just Enough Family. Just Enough Family. So yeah. she was. She has this beautiful line fig, and she sent me this and another thing that's so beautiful. Uh, but it's more summery. So I was I'm like, so glad. I just wanted to say thank you. Um, but there's something I need to talk about. We'll talk about it on the outro. Okay. All right, let's get Lola Blanc. Lola. Oh, she's a porn star. God, your background is so much nicer than my closet. Wow. Mm, I like a good closet. <laughs> Should we move it? No, I might. You know, the one thing in my house besides my wrapping area that's 
a disaster is the closet because I just moved and it's like, I can't even open the door to look in because I just throw <laughs> shit in there. And it's just like, <laughs> I've done that. I can't, I, I, it's just going to be such an undertaking. I'm just wearing the same shit over and over and over again from my hamper. I'm like, all right, <laughs> we'll, we'll do it. It's just, it's going to be a whole thing, but really. it's going to be one of these. I will never come out of the closet and I'm totally <laughs> out of the closet, but <laughs> You know what I mean. So yeah. welcome, Lola Blanc. Um, tell me, you have a new, is it a new podcast? Uh, is- it's not that new now. We're a little over a year old now. Oh, okay. Ryan told me it was new. He's fired. Um, <laughs> it, it's called Trust Me. And I was, I'm was i so Trust interested. Um, it's about like power and like living in a cult and male. Like, <laughs> what? It, tell me, you were in a cult? Because I feel like I would totally go into a cult if it was like a fun one. Um, well, most people would, even if they don't think that they would, but you definitely would. I can totally totally see it. I'm super (laughs) manipulatable. We all are. That's the thing. Yeah. So the podcast is about cult, extreme belief, and the abuse of power is what we say. But we also talk about all things like manipulation and power dynamics and that kind of thing. So what made you decide you want like to share this? Because I mean, like, it's kind of embarrassing, but it's also, I mean, no offense. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, but it's also like, you know. I feel like the whole R. Kelly thing, that was kind of cultish. Totally. Um, right? Like, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm trying to get I, – I really want to get one of his victims on, on oh to talk about God. that experience because that's absolutely – all the exact same – yeah, no, Doctors absolutely. Yeah, but I think a lot of them were paid off. Um, like through I know he's broke now, but I you gotta find one that didn't get them cash. Well, all the ones from the documentary, I imagine. Did it? Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's probably right. Well, we'll get just DM them on Instagram. But that would be it's true, it's true. I, I'm so curious after watching that. Like what I don't that's not a cult that I would want to be in. Not that one. Well, no. you that's the thing, though. It's like nobody believes that the thing that they are joining or the person that they're getting involved with is going to be abusive. Like what happens right. in the beginning is like, oh, this like really famous like rock star essentially has like chosen me and has decided that I am special and wants to like see me all the time. It's really, really flattering and it's mm. really intoxicating and yeah. it's hard to sort of especially when they want to hang out with you all the time which can feel like falling in love but of course that's what we call love bombing and that's actually a red flag if somebody just lavishes you with attention right in the beginning like that's actually something that's maybe not such a good sign i love know? red flags though Oof. <laughs> yeah, me too oh i'm like yes Please. this is a problem let's get into it i'm like oh you're obsessed with me and telling me you love me after <laughs> date three i know this is get ridiculous <laughs> but I give it to me yeah <laughs> right uh, well, yeah we're both fucked up okay but go on <laughs> Yeah. So I, when I was a child, my mother and I basically got swindled by a cult, a self-proclaimed prophet who was a Mormon offshoot, like Oh, Mormons, leader. they scare me. Yeah. So we were, we were LDS when I was growing up, we were Mormon. Um, and this guy kind of preyed on those beliefs and basically over time convinced us that he is the one true prophet of God. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. You know, as, as one as I mean, is. I think when it comes to religion, there's so many people that um, are manipulatable. I really think that people want to believe in a higher power and that there is something, af- you know, an afterlife and they're willing to give the church or whoever they think is connected to God their money, their sex, their whatever it is. I mean, religion is like it's it's a huge thing for a lot of people. Well, it- that is true, but I would also say that there are all kinds of there's so many different kinds of cults. And it really just depends on like what if there is a human need that can be filled or mm. seem to be filled by another person, there is a cult for it. So it does like every all people are susceptible. That's why there's like self help cults and sex <laughs> cults and yoga cults and religious cults and uh more I'm like masculinity cults, you know, QAnon. Like there's there's so oh, that, many those different people kinds. Are fucked up. They scare yeah. me. They're sad. It makes me sad. It makes me sad. It, it, it's just maybe like we should. You know are- what? We shouldn't even talk about them. That's how scared I am. <laughs> Jesus. I just feel bad for them. I just, I just like those are clearly people who are lacking community or like lacking. A yeah, they need acceptance. Life. They want to be part of something. It's. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it is sad. They need a hug. They need a friend, and then they need to rush the White House. So that was fun. <laughs> well, they or, need to not commit acts of violence. Ideally, yeah. But but like extremism makes me sad. I just feel bad for people who like. F- 
right. or in a place in their lives where they're even drawn to they're, that kind of thing. They're so you know? desperate for really love and acceptance by anyone. Do you feel yeah. like that's part of it? Like you just want to belong and whether it's if where you want to belong isn't accepting you, you'll go anywhere. It's kind of like an inside I, job. Yeah, I think it can. That can be one of the major factors for sure. Although what's interesting is that sometimes you hear stories of people who have loving families, they have friends, and then they're just like secretly getting into this thing. And there can be all kinds of reasons for that. But one of the things that we talk about a lot is that like, it usually happens to people when they've recently undergone some kind of major life transition or change or like, something traumatic divorce <laughs> yeah so, yeah exactly yeah. divorce death of the family even graduating college um so many like changing your job anything these things can make us vulnerable because we're like what now right we need what's we the need, answer yeah exactly well, what's next what are we supposed to do we need direction and if we can't mm-hmm. give that to ourselves we're willing to follow somebody else's Right. And and these leaders are so charismatic and so manipulative. And uh, like, it's really more about them than it is about their victims. These are people who are experts at reading you. They're experts at, at finding all your little vulnerabilities and preying on them. You know, this this is what they do. They're very good at it. Like Lisa Vanderpump. What do you I think? D- yeah. I have no con- cultural context <laughs> for that, but I'm going to say yes. <laughs> I'm going to say yes, too. Um, what about Tom Cruise? I feel like... I feel like Scientology is a cult to me. I mean, oh yeah, I just oh, feel I mean, like it is. I feel like there's no question that Scientology is a cult. No, I think that there can be people who are in it who maybe don't experience the culty side of it as much. Right, because they're not like yeah, they're not famous enough. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't want to be. They don't want to be an actor. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So this episode is brought to you by Best Fiends, and mine is sitting next to me. He's my best fenemy. Buddy? No, you are my fiendemy. <laughs> He's my frenemy. Um, Ryan, because we have really competitions and whatnot with Best Fiends. So if you've listened to this show for a while, you know that I am obsessed with Best Fiends. In my humble yet correct opinion, it's the best match freestyle game by far. And I especially love playing Best Fiends during the holiday season. It's the perfect way to relax and give my mind a little break from the craziness of the holiday yeah, season. Escape from the family for like a minute. You oh know. my God. Oh, yes. Seriously. <laughs> Best Fiends actually has a storyline with good guys and villains. The bad guys are slugs, which is hilarious. Mm-hmm. You're playing it right now, like while I'm I'm doing this. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm he's he's trying to make me jealous. It's so crazy. <laughs> Your fiends start out as babies, and part of the game is about helping them grow and build their teams while solving increasingly challenging puzzles. Ryan thinks he's better than me at that, which he is not. I am. It's an a- maybe a little bit. <laughs> it's an action-packed adventure and brain-boosting puzzles rolled into one. And with new content added to the game all of the time, you will never get bored. It's not like just like the dumb video games that you sit and you shoot people for no reason. This actually gets your mind working. And you can play it with or without Wi-Fi, which means Airplane. If you're, yeah, if you're traveling, right? Mm-hmm. Get it, so get it loaded. hopefully you're not traveling, but if you are, you know, play Best Fiends. So wherever the holidays may take you, rest assured, you can play Best Fiends. And if your dad or mom or one of your crazy aunts or uncles is really annoying, show them the game and then you won't have to deal with them. So download Best Fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's Best Friends without the R, best fiends. So what kind of cult? So it was the Mormon cult? Like that's what you got caught up in? Not like a fun sex cult? Not a fun sex cult, unfortunately. But the, the my life is young still. There's still ch- there's still time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was So we were Mormon and he <laughs> prayed on our beliefs. He basically said he was translating the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon, which in Mormonism, like basically the Mormon book is it's like the Bible, there's the Bible, and then there's the Book of Mormon. In Mormonism, there's a part of it that is supposed to be revealed in the last days by like whoever the prophet is at that right. time. So these some of these guys will now be like, I'm translating the sealed <laughs> portion. I'm the one. I'm the prophet, you know. Right. Mormons and are fucking crazy. <laughs> I have I have so much family who's still Mormon. I'm still Mormon. It is not a religion that I identify with. But there's No, I dated one people. over um but like at the beginning of COVID, like I met him online. Really? Like yeah. a current Mormon or a former Mormon? A, cor- a, a, cur- a current, a current Mormon. And oh. um, 
I found his relationship with his stepdaughter to be very creepy. And I like I when I met her, I was like that like you guys are not blood relatives and should not be like hugging like that goodbye and like kissing on the lips. No, Uh no, I just didn't enjoy it. That sounds like a him thing. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Thing. I don't know. There's a lot of crossover situations and sister wives in Mormon, right? Well, those are fundamentalist Mormons. So those okay. are – polygamists are not mainstream Mormons. Mainstream Mormonism does not condone polygamy. That's like from okay. the 1800s. Um, but well, a lot of people don't know that. So right. It, like on Housewives right now, this one guy wants to get a sister wife in Salt Lake City and it's like a real thing. He wants to get a sister – like as in have more and, than one wife? Uh-huh. And he said it, and he was serious, and I wanted to punch my TV. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, listen, there are men who want that. <laughs> I mean, I think most men wouldn't mind to have. I mean, yeah. what, what we call them outside of religion are side chicks, but, you know, whatever. You do you. I mean, at least he's bringing it up to her face and asking. I mean, sure. most guys just hide it and, like, get a condo and pay the rent, like, for the girl or whatever, but. <laughs> Little do they know, having more than one wife is, like, pretty hard, I think. Uh, like, you have to emotionally take care of more than one person. No. And sexual, like, it's actually probably not as fun as they think it is. I'm no, just saying. That's what, I mean, I'm just saying, like, get a side chick. She just wants some shoes and that's it. <laughs> like, you don't even have to say I love you. Um, exactly. So you've been in the business for a while and you wrote one of Britney's t- uh, Britney Spears' top 40 songs. That's, I'm so excited about that because I love Brit Brit. Um, <laughs> tell me what that experience was like. Well, that was originally my song, actually. So my name is Lola and the oh, yeah, song was called sorry. You Do It All. Right. <laughs> um, and what happened was the producer that I wrote it with at the time, this guy Ammo, um, happened to be working with someone who was handling all of the whatever Britney's new music so he he heard it and thought it would be perfect for Britney so she recorded it they rewrote the lyrics and she recorded it and thus I wrote a Britney Spears song so do you get royalties from that uh I do yeah I mean not Mm. that many because it wasn't a big enough hit let's be honest it's not toxic I fucking wish it was toxic right but (laughs) but sure yeah I Mm. I know right I don't know yeah I mean let's talk about Britney for a second um I love I love Brit Brit but I feel like she needs to get her ass off of Instagram. Like, I don't know what is happening. Someone it comb is, her hair for her, please. I, 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 I know. Bless her heart. Bless her heart. But some of those posts, I'm like, yeah, yeah. okay. I mean, I'm glad that she's free and, I, and she deserves to be free. But I just think that maybe she's just going a little crazy because she is free and she's been locked up for so long. So maybe she's just like, I'm going to put all of my content out right now. And she gets the content confused and forgets to take a shower or brush her hair. And then it's all out. And I have another theory. Do you want to hear it? Yes. Yes, please. I think that her boyfriend, Sam, allegedly, I don't know them. I I have been in the same basketball game as Brittany because our kids are the same age. But people kept me away from her because they, they were scared for her. Um, but I think he might not go to the same church as her. Oh. not We're not talking Mormons here. We're talking like maybe he's a fan. What, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean? Expand. I just, this is just a thought. That maybe, you know, a lot of Britney's super fans maybe don't go to the he- heterosexual church. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm trying to figure out why he's allowing her to post these things. And I well, just. he doesn't. He's not controlling. Which the whole thing is she's not being controlled, right? So who's No, allowing? I know. But he did stick around for all of the craziness. And I don't know any guy that would do that. Not any. Not one. I don't. Not not my not my dad. Not my grandpa. Like not the best guys in the world. I mean, that's dedication. Yeah. Yes. Like I'm telling you with Britney, bitch. Like he's he's her number one fan. I'm just in my head, like trying to figure it all out. And I love Brit. And I'm glad. Like if he is going to a different church, great. Like, I just take care of her. But, like, put a proper ponytail on her. Do something. As long as her emotional and physical needs are being met, you know, they can do whatever they want to do. I am really glad that she's free. Me too. I'm so glad. I just, I want her to be free forever. So so I think the social media post should just, like, 
take it take a little chill <laughs> take a little chill that's all <laughs> love you Britt you know she knows I love her I'm obsessed with her I know where she lives I, I'm, like I've done drive-bys oh it's a little fanatic <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I'm a fan. Like, I know fan. where she lives. <laughs> well, it's like one gate up. I'm like, mm, I, don't do it, B. <laughs> I actually drove up Drake's driveway the other day, and it, you're not allowed to, but I, I went for it. Oh, my God. Risky. My friend was in town, and she wanted to see where famous people live, and my ex-husband lives in that community. And so I asked him if we could go on the gate, right? I don't know where anyone lives in in, in Hen Hills except for Kim Kardashian, but randomly, <laughs> we ran into a friend of hers, this big music producer, and he jumped in my car and gave us the full tour. And he's like, "Oh, that's Drake's driveway. But oh, you, wow! You can't go up there." I said, "Oh, you want to bet?" <laughs> and so I drove up, and then security ran out, and we drove out really fast. Um, that's amazing. I was going to say before yeah. you told me that you had a tour guide, do do famous people just know where all other famous people live? Is that just a thing? Yeah, because this guy's like he's won like four Tonys and he's super like, mm. I don't want to say who he is because he might hate me. Um, But he jumped in the car. But they all live in this like where my ex-husband lives. And it's like where horses, I call it horses and divorces. But <laughs> um, I guess once you're in there, I don't know where anyone lives, but now I know where Drake lives and and actually now I know where a lot of people live. Even Madonna and her garage was open. <laughs> yeah. Did you see anything good? No, but like who she like why like why is your garage open? Why is your gate open? Like you're Madonna. Maybe she likes it that way. It's Madonna. Yeah. She's I a was, lawyer. I wanted to go in so bad. <laughs> so bad. You always have no idea. I, I just want to like, see the houses. I just want to see the designs of all of the houses in person. Uh, like, they, I don't care about like, the rest of it. They're stupid. There's, they're so beautiful. And the Christmas light situation happening in there right now, it's like somebody was on meth, but it's amazing. Love it. Yeah. I want that. Nobody knows where I live, so clearly I'm not famous enough Well, yet. you're in the closet, bitch. <laughs> So the outside, you're, you're though, the living us. room, the living room is real pretty though. Not gonna lie, <laughs> <laughs> I have a zebra on my wall. Oh, can you hold on for one second? Because Ryan got his Moderna shot today and he forgot to refresh the batteries. Anna Luisa believes that high quality jewelry shouldn't cost the planet. They also believe that luxury shouldn't be defined so narrowly and designed for so few. Their jewelry is priced fairly and produced ethically, no unnecessary mining or excessive markups. They used recycled materials whenever possible, and they are 100% carbon and water neutral. I absolutely recommend checking out Ana Luisa, and you can use my link, Shop AnnaLuisa.com slash Brandy. Their pieces start at just $39 and they are currently running their biggest sale of the year. So if you don't know what to get someone for Christmas, it's time to shop. You can get 60% off on the second item if you go to shopanaluisa.com slash Brandy. So two for one, it guys, get those presents done. Mags loves the um, bracelet you gave her. Oh, does she? See, I'm telling you, <laughs> Anna Luisa is where it's at. Can she hear me? I can hear you. So neat that you you were on American Horror Story. Tell me something. I mean, I literally only did one day and they cut out my scene where I'm in my underwear and trying to have sex with a ghost. So I was really sad <gasps> that they cut my ghost sex scene. I mean, it but sounds it's like fine. epic. Why would they ever cut that? That sounds like the best scene ever. Ask Ryan Murphy. It was so on brand for me, too. I'm like, yes, I literally like had sex with my sleep paralysis demons. Like this totally makes sense. But no. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> You're scaring me now a little bit. Um, let's Not on purpose. No, no. <laughs> it's OK. Um, so let's talk about ageism, because I think that the, you talked about that a little bit. And I do feel like women, especially we have um, a quote unquote expiration date, especially in mm-hmm. the film and music industry, especially if you're on camera, or on stage. Um, yeah. Even behind the scenes, and it's fucking bullshit, is what it is. But it Agreed. it's just it's not going away. I mean, it's gotten a little bit better with um, some movements that have happened, but it's still like you know you just don't see someone anymore once they hit thirty five. And it's um, something that was something was that the reason that you formed this um, group? I forgot what it was called. Photo Collective. Yes. Um. 
it wasn't directly that, but 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 also yes. Like there there it has just been so much harder to find for most for many of my friends, my extremely talented, beautiful, smart female friends who are working very very hard in this industry paths in just historically has been more difficult and yeah. that has begun to change for sure but I, I'm a horror lover I'm I want to make horror films highbrow horror films not slashers guys <laughs> um but horror nonetheless and and I found some lady friends who felt the same way and we were like let's just support each other in this and make them together and like we will be there is strength in numbers we will be able to accomplish it's more together so true somebody just said that to me I was Lindsay Palace I had her on Pilaf, I can never say it right. And she's like, we need to unite. Like, we need to all stick together on this. And I think that's something that a lot of women have a hard time doing. I think that there's a lot of jealousy amongst us women. And it's hard for women. I, I don't know why we can't just bro down like the dudes. Cause I do. <laughs> I bro down. I like to, I, like, I'm the more the merrier. I love having friends. Like, yeah. But there's yeah. a lot of people that don't, I don't, women, not all women have that gene. Um, but I think it's because we're all like goddesses and <laughs> I know I really do. And like we're here and we have our purpose and I don't know. But I mean, that's not me, but I think we are all goddesses. But I feel like some people just, they have a plan, they're driven, they they don't need noise, which I yeah. love noise. And I don't think of it as noise because we are, we all are stronger in numbers. Um, I just wish we could like get that point across to the – the step up bitches. <laughs> I mean, I I I have found so much more success and also just like happiness in like having a group of women around me where we are all supporting each other. And I'm not going to lie and act like there it doesn't sometimes get competitive because of course it does. But I would argue that men get competitive too and they just like oh, yeah. don't talk about it as oh, much. And that's like totally a stereotype. My dude friends are totally jealous of each other all the time. Oh uh, yeah. They, they just like don't talk about it at all. They just like get out there and they play basketball and they elbow each other and like it's over. <laughs> and for us, we yeah. have to deal with that and our periods and like, come on, <laughs> like get, like it's too, way too much for like women. And, you know, it is. But I think competitiveness can be a good thing because it can push the like what the collective what you're working on to higher levels. So, yeah, you know, you want, totally. it, you want everything to be the best it can be. So you don't want someone just like me are just kind of showing up and getting by. <laughs> hey guys, yeah. I'm here. You want everyone like to be a bit competitive. Like I'm, you know, or just to be the best they can be. And that kind of sometimes inspires competitiveness. Is that the right word? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oof, my best smart. friend and I have kind of a policy where if we're feeling jealous of the other person, we'll just tell each other okay. in this kind of like vulnerable way. And then it's like, oh, I'm so happy for you. I also am experiencing jealousy right now. Yeah. And then the, uh, the other one of us will be like, don't feel jealous. You have so much going on and it's going to happen for you too. You know, like there's yeah. a way to have those feelings. Those feelings are human and not let them drive your behavior. Oh my you God, know? 100%. Like I do that. Too. I'm like, I'm so happy for you, but I'm so jealous. Like, oh, I want it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, but as long as you say, I think when you keep something in, and other yeah. people are around and they're whispering. It's like, totally. obviously, we're going to have envy and jealousy. But it'd be, like, you wouldn't be human if you didn't. I mean, yeah, but it also, it's a f yeah, it drives you. It's a made up binary. It's not like either you're happy for them or you're jealous of them. Like, right. that's bullshit. We're human. We're complicated. We're, we can be happy for a friend. And also, like, it can make us think about what's going on for us and why that isn't happening for us. And, you know, like, but that, those can that's exist good. That, because it's introspective. It makes us we're human like you said and it does it isn't one or the other i mean i'm i'm a jealous person i'm a scorpio so i have fucking issues <laughs> so i told my friend i'm like she's getting close with another one of my friends closer i said i'm gonna go over and pee on you and mark my territory but i love <laughs> i said i said it to both of them i go don't forget she's my best friend but i'm like you guys go and have a good time but yeah you know because there, there are feelings i'm like oh you guys had lunch okay you know but i just i love all of my people so much and and i i always say the more the merrier i'm never like oh no she can't come right. unless well unless they have covid or they've been out like with a lot of people i'm like no you can't come but i'll just tell them myself <laughs> sure sure yeah, no if they have covid it's okay to say no but they if they're come. like like being around a lot of people i i have my little covid people that were very careful except for Kristen now has covid but she got the her daughter got it from school because Kristen was out of town and would test it mm. negative. And she got it while Kristen was out of town, which I thought Kristen brought it back to the family. So I said, like, Look what you did, but it wasn't that way. She just, you know, 
kids are gross and dirty. Yep. And so are adults, yeah. <laughs> apparently, because COVID is spreading like oh, yeah. wildfire. That, because I think people got relaxed. Do you know what I mean? Like they got relaxed yeah. and they were happy to be out again. And now they just start spitting when they talk to you. And it's like, what? People yeah. Yeah, are gross. Uh, I'll go back to just Being in hiding the in my apartment, <laughs> hiding here in this messy ass closet. Yes. So what what kind of cult is your um, – could you have a co-host – that yeah. you do the podcast with. What kind of cult is that that she got into? So hers was is also a religious cult. Um, but they were called the two by two. They are called the two by twos. Although they actually don't technically have a name. That's just like one of the things that they call themselves. But they're the nameless oh. group. They basically kind of dress like Amish people. Um, yeah. Long dresses, long hair, no pants. Um, <laughs> dresses instead of pants, not oh. pantsless. And um, <laughs> they can't watch TV or like... Uh, I can't remember. She wasn't allowed to watch movies when she was growing up. I feel like she wasn't allowed to use the internet. She was just very, very, very sheltered. Um, and then they have this really strange setup where it's like... So she's still in, in it? No. Her, oh. her family is, though. Oh. Um, yeah. So we're both former members of these like specific groups. And then we talk to people from all different kinds of other groups. Right. You got to get that one chick that um, was an actress. What's her name? India Oxenberg. I don't know. Is she blonde? And she was like... She got that tattoo with the people. From Nexium. Yeah. Yes. We, yeah. we we talked to her. Yeah. We had India on. She's amazing. Did she go to jail? Um, or do you mean her the woman who was above her, Allison Mack? Uh yeah, Allison Mack. No, wasn't Allison she didn't one oh yeah, one of them. I don't know, the blonde one that was on TV. They're like all blonde. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't pay Keith attention. Obviously. Loved blonde. <laughs> I never remember anyone's names. I, I like yours. It's Lila Blanc. It sounds like a porn star name. And that's why uh, I, I remember it. take that it. as a compliment. It is. Look, <laughs> yeah. I'm like Brandy. I got a stripper name. Thanks, parents. Brandy Lynn. I like them Taking better. Take the stage. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. So what's up next for you? What's exciting? I mean, obviously, I think we're going to shut back down for a little while because COVID's fucking taking over again. But what's next for you? What's exciting? What are you doing? Who are you killing? <laughs> I can scream if you need someone to scream. <laughs> Honestly, I might take you up on that. Yeah. Uh, I am. Well, so I'm directing a short and uh, that just got greenlit today, actually. Ooh, congrats. Um, thank you. In two months, which is, it's a little bit political. It's, Ooh. A, it's, it's about a Tommy Lauren type character. It's not about Tommy Lauren herself, but it's about a type of person like that. Okay. Um, going through a crisis of conscience. And I also, um, the Fatal Gals and I are working on a feature anthology together, which would be so amazing if we could get to make that soon. And I also have new music coming out. Oh, wow. Yeah. Look, you're a very creative person. You're like Ryan's fiance. Um, Actually, you're also like our Uber driver because we were in an Uber <laughs> the other day and it was the longest, shortest Uber ride of all time. And our driver, he's a horror movie. Um, he does directs horror movies on, I guess, the side when he's not driving Uber. Nice. And he did, he pulled over so that we could look at – he had to find his – his what was it? Trailer. His trailer on YouTube. We we were forced to watch it, and Ryan had to go somewhere, and we're in the gates like creeping along at one mile an hour. And to be honest, <laughs> I mean, I felt for the guy. I was like, yeah, I would love to see it. Um, and it seemed like it was slightly pornish. Um, a little bit. There was a lot oh. of like sex, like it was like a vampire oh. slash horror. But, My goodness, but like high school kids too. Yeah, they looked it's young. Like <laughs> I was a little. Ooh. But I will say, he said it was low budget, and yeah. I thought it was the quality. I liked, I liked it for him. Yeah, you can stream it on Amazon. I think. You can stream it. On, <laughs> yeah, you can stream it on Amazon. That's so Ryan, your Uber driver, right? I love that you said you're like my Uber driver, yeah. which is maybe the best quote about me. <laughs> that has I got some so good far. ones. I mean, <laughs> you never. Know. I dated one of my Uber drivers for three years, so I love, I love me Uber too. drivers. Yeah, of course. I was a Lyft driver years ago. It sucked. I fucking hated it. Mm, that was well, not I my mean, favorite way to make money. I got some good D out of it, so I'm not mad at it. I'm, I just personally wouldn't want people in my car because I am grossed out by people. People are gross. Yeah, people. <laughs> Especially boys. But I mean, just boys because they're just dirty. Yeah, boys are dirty. I'm dating a guy now Ooh. who... I'm like madly in love. Today's <gasps> we've been dating for six months as of today. Don't say you're in love with them. Don't tell. Oh, you keep the ball in your court. Oh, and I love you for months. Dumb. <laughs> 
mistake. Okay. No, he loves me. He loves me so much. But I'm imagining if we ever move in together and I'm like, this is how, well, how will I, what would I, how would I, I've never lived with a guy. So I don't, I don't know how to handle it, but I don't think our, I don't know how life, how compatible our ways of living are. How but does you it don't, work? I mean, like Mia Farrell never lived with Woody, what's his face? The, the molester guy. Well, I'm not exactly looking at that relationship for um, <laughs> example of what I well, Brandy, want. you said that if you ever yeah, you I don't want to. Li- I don't want to live. You with said anyone. they have to have like a separate bedroom. Uh, yeah, I, no, I, I would like to have a separate bedroom. 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 I said separate bathroom. 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 Right, okay. Bedroom, we are sharing a bedroom, okay. but I would like to have my. Own, I like my own space. Like I really. Me too. Like, I like to have my shit where it is, and I've lived alone. Well, I live with two boys like they're my children though i call them my roommates when i talk to guys i'm like oh my roommates <laughs> yeah they're not here this again so um but yeah i'm i'm, I'm kind of i feel you on that it's hard to do uh, but you're clearly letting him know that you're thinking about it which is again a mistake so <laughs> i don't it's i don't cool. see th- i don't see this happening for you i'm just gonna let you know right now <laughs> she's got past oh, trauma he, and she's he loves projecting. me so much he loves me so I have, much i do have past trauma I have, have you lived with a man I lived with one man for 13 years. That was 13 fun. 13 years. And then the Uber driver often pretty much stayed with me most of the time. <laughs> After his okay. waiter, waiting shift would end, he'd come not, over. Not would... the guy with, that makes the horror films. No, 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 no. <laughs> the one, the sex Uber driver. Yeah, Got yeah. The, the French guy who's 10 years younger than me and has the biggest dick I've ever seen pretty much. Ooh. Yeah. And, and he spoke, he has an accent and he's he's so sexy. Wait, did you date date or did you just like fuck for a long time? No, he, he was like always around. Like he met the kids. The kids loved him. I don't know. We like wow. I said he could still sleep with whoever he wanted. Okay. You weren't calling each other like boyfriend, girlfriend type thing. Were we? You weren't, I was asking. Um I don't like those terms. Okay. It was just oh. what it was. He came over all the time. I, I cooked. You, I remember you talking about him. He smoked I, way too much pot. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's it. He liked Meanwhile, pizza. I'm like, if you're not calling yourself my boyfriend after two months, then I'm out. Oh. I need labels. I'm oh, a label Oh, my girl. Lord. But, but you know what? Look it. I'm single and you're not. So it's working. You're a label <laughs> whore and it's working. You live in your closet and you don't want to live true. with a man. <sighs> yeah. Um, good luck. <laughs> I'm, gonna wish, I'm on that note i'm gonna end this <laughs> no but we have to go it was so lovely to meet you you're awesome you good too. luck with everything you're doing and i say go women go get your music on do everything it seems like you're gonna do really well i love your personality thank you thank you so much yours too thanks uh, for having me on no. <laughs> bye <Lala Blanc. laughs> bye fun i liked lola i did too i feel like her and i would totally be like best friends i'm gonna get ann on her podcast that's gonna be wild <laughs> oh my god it's so fun i would listen to that one um okay so there there's a little thing happening in my family that we need to go over Uh-oh. no so you know jake and i watch watch what happens live together because yeah. him and Loves andy it. have like a special yeah. bond like when Andy got, gave me the job for this new um, show that I did, yeah. which is fucking wild. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, he's like, tell Jake I gave you work. So they have this like, because because Jake got mad at him. Oh, I remember he remember? sent that yeah. message or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So then, you know, we watched Watch It Happens Live. One time was Sheena and they brought up Eddie's name and Jake was just oh. like, kind of like, oh. Oh, not happy because Sheena and Eddie had a, a, an affair, but you know, okay, you know, okay. that's his dad. You know, yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Eh. No, 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 no. It's, and, it's I uncomfortable. Mean, and also, like she's sitting there with her man. It's kind of emasculating to talk about the dick she got before her man. Yeah, oh, I don't know, but that's, I don't like it. Okay, but I don't care. It's not okay. my problem. This is my this is my question. Not really a problem. All right. Okay, so Sheena is happily married to a guy Great. and has a baby. Great. And so he was, Andy was asking about comparing how many like Instagram followers certain celebrities had in comparison to Sheena's baby. Does the, the baby has its own Instagram account? <laughs> this is my question. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I know like Coco and, and Ice T's baby has one. And she's, oh, really? Like, fashion-y I stuff. guess it's just like people do it for their pets all the time. So well, why not a baby? You're saying a baby's a pet? I'm just saying like no, okay, if they so do it for a pet, question. then of course they do it for a baby, I guess. Do you? So my kids got on Instagram like a couple of years ago, but yeah. like that was their choice and whatnot. Like, what do you feel? Do they hand over the Instagram account to their kid when they grow up? I mean, I feel like somebody as a kid could sue their parents saying you 
you took my privacy. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Because somebody just sued um, their mother for ha- for giving birth to them because they had spinal bifida, and <laughs> has a miserable, a miserable life. No, I'm serious. And one, but that, you can't what? The, she and won one? The so, yeah, it's, it's a long story. But oh so, God. I mean, Shady Andy did compare um, Sheena's baby to Eddie Cibrian. Again, it's like I feel sorry for the dudes at next door, but. <laughs> And Jake is like, somebody's obsessed with my dad. And I was oh, like, oh, okay. my God. Um, but I, my whole thing is like, as a baby, and I love Sheena. We get along great now. I'm okay. happy for her. I That's hope her good. husband is, because there's some shady shit about him on the show. Oh. And I hope that he rises to the occasion as a good dad and takes care of. When you say the show, you mean the one you just... No, no, she's on Vanderpump Got it, Rules. that one, yeah. That. And I read some stuff online that's not yep. very positive. Ugh. But I want, I literally, I feel like she deserves to be happy. I mean, she's been through some shitty people. Sure. Um, But my question is, like, do we put our babies on Instagram? Like, No, I don't think so. You put, a, you put pictures on your Instagram. Well, Gabrielle Union, she has a shady baby Instagram for her baby. I don't, I'm just, I'm wondering Wait, for celebrities. Shady baby? Yeah, because her baby makes shady faces. Is it is it private? Is no, it a private? No. See, then that's I think if it's I don't pri- think so. If I don't it's know. private, then I think that's okay, right? I mean, I think you, you your can family, put it on, your family wants to see all those photos. I don't see. I'm I'm on the fence. I don't know, like, because a lot of people want to protect their kids' identities. I feel like it should be the kids' choice, and if when they're old enough to make that choice, like Jake yeah. just started Instagram. Yeah, he's like, I don't know what to post. I go. I don't know what to post. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, I'm the worst on Instagram. You are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I am the worst. Um, But, you know, Mason's been on it for a little while. He rarely uses it. He was doing my Instagram for me. Right. But I never, I put pictures of them on my Instagram, like Throwback Thursday, me with the baby. And, but they, are they always approved. I, okay. They are, I don't know. Asked. Yeah. That's a lot of sketchy stuff there. I don't like it. I don't know what I would do. I don't think I would create an Instagram account for my baby. I don't think I would do but that. But a lot of people do it. I don't know if I feel how I feel about it. But how do you feel about it being compared to the Instagram account of someone you used to have an affair with? I don't like that either. <laughs> I, don't like that. I don't like that. Jake got very territorial, and I kind of was Papa Bearded up too, because I was like, mm. <laughs> "Listen, at least you know I'm allowed to not be happy with Eddie." Was no one else like? <laughs> It the, it happened to me, not yeah. anyone else. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And he's I can, very protective over you. Yes. It's but very you sweet. No, but Jake, no, but Jake is protective over his dad too. So yeah. he was not happy because Andy and him they like each other. He was having a little moment. Did he? Did he? Did, he, did he send Andy a text or something? No, I got a little. I got. I went on Twitter for one minute uh, okay. just to defend my ex to say, you know, uh, you know, Eddie pays his child support and he's a good father and he's never hit me. Because That's there's good. allegations of that with oh. the other person. Oh. So at the end of the day, I'm I'm happy with my ex. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, but I, you know, I oh, just weird. feel like at this point, we've all let if I, anyone can, is allowed to be mad at him, it's just me. <laughs> and I am a lot, but it's just between us at this point. Yeah. So yeah. And so Jake's a little pissed off. But uh, well, then he's like, who puts a baby on Instagram? That's what I'm saying. Well, and Jake yeah. is, you know, Jake, he knows. He he's good. What does he know? Everything. <laughs> He knows everything. You know what? I think I'm going to ask my friend, who's his best friend's dad, to be on our new podcast. Oh, okay. Uh, It's not a new podcast, but guys, we have exciting news and we'll tell you all about it next week. We are going, we're staying here, but we're also adding additional content and on a new platform we're going to be super interactive it's going to be super fun i'm going to talk to you guys yeah. like personally and shit oh my god i can't wait i, I can't wait. don't sue me um I'm, i'll have you all sign an NDA oh that's what they should no. they should have to sign Fuck, <laughs> really seriously to join the thing. right yeah okay but we're, we're excited because this is just getting old and we're going to still do shit over here but we'll tell you all about it next week and Changing the format, but he making bit it me. just Tell new. Him. No, it's like, it was the thing. It's gonna Charlie be exciting. Bit me. Oh, I see. It really hurt. <laughs> it really hurt. Charlie Next week, we're gonna tell you right all now. about how it's gonna work. And yeah, I'm excited. Join. Yes, exactly. Not, it's not a cult. It, we can oh, make one. Yeah, you shouldn't say you just join. Said join. I know. Uh, but well, let's make a cult. 
We could call it a cult. Yeah. Is that would that bring more people or less? I would I would join a cult. Is it a weird sex cult? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. It is. <laughs> Want to do a haiku? Yeah. It's a short one. It's okay. short and sweet and to the point because Ryan's sick mm-hmm. and he needs to drive home. Yeah. Quickly. Okay. Can you braid? Braid? Yeah, hair? I can braid hair. I think I mean I haven't done this since elementary school, but okay. I did do it. All right, so with, next time. For my girlfriends. Cults. Nope. Cults. That's a long intro. Cults. Cults are odd. Some are fun. Sex ones might make you come. <laughs> That's it. That's that was really good. That was good. Thanks. See you next week. Bye. Thanks for listening to Brandy Glanville Unfiltered. Download new episodes every week. And if you haven't already, subscribe. And be sure to leave us a rating and review. And while you're at it, Check out some of the other great shows available on Straw Hut Media.